Welcome to another Corel Draw tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be doing a speed run with all the tools on the left hand side. I'm going to be using different shapes and different things to perform uh, what each tool does. I'm not going to go extremely in depth because I'm just going to try to knock out each tool really quickly so you can kind of get a general understanding of what each tool does. And I'm not going to go through every individual tool because there's a lot. As you can see, if I hold down the left click there's several other tools within one tool so i'm going to be going over the tools i normally use on a day-to-day -day basis so starting off the pick tool um, after i use every other tool i always revert back to the pick tool because if i have two squares like this i'm going to change the color so you can see them very clearly um see i'm moving them around now uh, like I, I, automatically out of habit i go back to the pick tool because if I constantly have the square selected if I go to grab this and move it I'm just gonna create another square and you can see that right there let me I could go to the center and move it like that but it's much easier just to go to the pick tool and click any part of the square to move it around um, and again like I said if I just have the square tool selected I'm just gonna be creating a lot more squares for no reason and yeah so let's delete all of those um for the shape tool the shape tool is pretty cool with uh different shapes you can change the outside of the shape like like i'm doing here you can see exactly what's happening but um it's more useful for objects that are converted into curves since this is just a square if i convert it to curves now i can double click and i'll automatically go into the shape tool and uh, i can move and edit each individual node of the shape or the object i'm editing so uh, that's pretty much what the shape tool does within the shape tool i don't really use much of of these it's normally just a shape tool for the crop i only use the crop for jpegs so if i press print screen um, I can paste my whole screen right here. I have two monitors. So um, let's say I wanted this little game over icon right here. Um, I would make sure the JPEG I'm cropping is selected. And then I click the crop button and I click and drag and then I double click just like that. And then I can quick trace this, um, whatever I need to do with it. Uh, if I don't have the JPEG selected, and I have nothing selected and I go to crop the image it's actually cropping my whole canvas like that so don't don't do that be sure your JPEG selected um, now we're gonna go to the eraser tool right here or X um, I could click once and then click in a different area see like this so I click once down here and click in this area and it creates a line or I could just click and drag just like that sometimes the eraser tool is kind of finicky it won't uh, erase everything I can resize the eraser up here like that um, also if I change my units so if I change my units to feet and if I go back to the eraser it starts to resize things in feet now so it resizes a lot faster um, now we have the magnifying glass if I click and drag, it's going to magnify. <laughs> if I right click and drag, it's going to magnify. Um, this is useful because if I have an object like this and I want to zoom in to where it's it's more zoomed in than this, but it's less zoomed in than this. I can grab my magnifying glass and start right at the top and at the bottom. And boom now it's zoomed in how I want uh, generally speaking though I just use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out okay for freehand freehand is very useful if you have a touchscreen computer but uh, for the most part I just use freehand for tracing uh, things like flames anything that's really curvy um, like I said if you have a touchscreen computer it's a lot easier but you can go in and go through each individual flame and uh, once you go around all of it, then make sure you connect it. 
so connect it over here be sure to connect it if you don't connect it it's okay you can go to the shape tool and grab the node and drag it to the original node so now it's completely connected and then you can fill in the shape with a color of some sort if it wasn't connected it wouldn't let you fill in the shape okay um and not just that sometimes the shape tool doesn't or uh, the freehand tool doesn't work perfectly like it won't put a node in the corner often and so you have to go back with the shape tool and uh, mess around with each individual node to make it exactly how you want on to the bezier i don't really use anything else in here just freehand and bezier so click bezier um bezier is just clicking wherever you want and it creates a outline following you okay um, i can also click and drag to create curves um, but sometimes that does get tricky if you don't know exactly how to work with bezier so um, oftentimes it's easy just to click and drag like that especially if you're working with uh, linear objects instead of like super curvy objects like this after i go around the whole flame i'm going to have to go into my shape tool and move each individual node around so i can uh, make it curvy now what you can do is see how i'm deleting nodes and it's just making it straight um, i could click this and then go up to here and convert it to a curve so now i can move it around and make it curvy okay i don't really use artistic media live sketch or smart drawing uh, uh, I do use the rectangle tool a lot, uh, almost every job I do. Um, that's because whenever I load up a new canvas, if you double click the rectangle tool, it automatically puts a rectangle around your canvas. That way you can um, align things to your canvas. So if I have a circle right here and I have the circle selected, then I shift click the the square that's around the canvas and then i can press c and align things to the to the canvas okay i just pressed e to align it vertically and i press c to align it horizontally within the rectangle tool i don't use three point rectangle uh down to ellipse ellipse it's just circles it's pretty much it um you could create ovals by just clicking and dragging um or you can click and drag and then hold control and it will uh, create the circle proportionally on all sides. If you hold control and shift, it will size it proportionally from the center. If you just hold control, it goes from the corner. And if you just hold shift, it just sizes it from the center, but not proportionally. On to the polygon tool. I do use this for triangles. Um, it's automatically preset to five. I bring it down to three, so it's a perfect triangle. Get rid of that. Stars, I do use stars uh, for several different designs. I can go up to the sharpness dial and dial it down to make it less sharp or dial it up to make it more sharp. And you can see it's bringing the corners in. I can add more, more points by upping this number right here. And that's about all I use the star for. Under star, I don't really use spiral. Now common shapes, there's a heart in here that I use every once in a while uh, right here. Other than that, I don't really use much out of that. Um, then we go to the impact tool. The impact tool is really cool for different designs. I click the impact tool, then click and drag immediately. Sometimes it will be preset to radial. Sometimes it will be linear. So this one is radial. It's kind of hard to see. Um, so I'm going to thicken it up by going here. And you can see what it's creating there. If I click it and then I go to parallel, um, we have that and I can make it less. Um, I can also decrease the amount of striations here by going up to here. I'm actually increasing and it's making it smaller and then I can make it thicker by going here. Um, you'll have to just have fun and mess around with these. You could click it, change it, make it shorter, make it longer. Um, and then you could just keep on messing around with these to get exactly what you want. Sometimes it is a little finicky. Um, so when I making it go down, I go on max. And when I'm making it go up, I go on minimum because 
if I go up on max, it's only going to change max and it's not going to change minimum. Um, if I go down on minimum, it's only going to change minimum. So it starts to make it uneven like this. Um, same thing with the minimum and maximum. If I go up on maximum, it's going to make like every other one thicker. And minimum, if I go down, it's going to make every other one smaller. So it's kind of weird. You'll have to just mess with it. For text, I use text quite a lot. Um, with text, if you click and drag, um, you could create a text box, which confines your text specifically to this area. However, if you don't click and drag, if you just click, then you could start typing without being confined to a space. Then you could go back to your pick tool and then you could move it around like that. With your pick tool, if you double click a text, it automatically brings you into the text tool and you could start editing it like this. You could press enter to, to go underneath. Um, you have your font size up here. You have your fonts right here. Um, you can make it bold. If you're clicking bold and italicize and nothing's happening, it's because you don't have anything selected. Okay, so now it's bolding it and italicizing it. However, if you go to your pick tool, you can just click the whole text and then press bold and italicize like that. Or you can go into it and select the exact portions you want to bold and italicize. Same thing with outlines. If I right click, it will put an outline only around the text I want there to be an outline on. Table, I don't really use table much, but it's useful sometimes. Okay, the parallel dimension tool, I do use this every so often if I'm trying to get an exact dimension of an object. So let's click the parallel, parallel dimension tool. I click, I click and I drag, and then I let go, and then it brings it down like this. And then I click again, and then boom, it automatically gives me the dimension of this. I can use this and change the font size up. I can change this outline over here to be bigger so I can see. And right click to change the color, left click to change the fill of this text. And um, I would generally use this for proofs and sending things to different clients if they were very nitpicky on measurements. So with the parallel tool, if you're doing a dimension on a circle, sometimes if you don't grab the exact edge and then you go over here, it's going to drag it out sideways like that. Whereas if you have the horizontal or vertical dimension tool, you could go anywhere like this and it won't go in a diagonal shape. It will go straight down. You could do the same thing. Uh, horizontally instead of vertically because the tools named that and then we go to I don't really use angular dimension or any of these uh, nor do I use connector or anchor editing now shadows contours blends all that I use pretty much everything here however I use shadows and contours the most out of everything uh, so let's go to shadow if I click the object I want to create a drop shadow on and I go to presets, I always use small glow. Right there, it automatically adds a small glow and then I go up to this right here and I can change the color. So there we go. The feathering right here, you can make it very thin shadow. You can make it a very thin shadow or you can make it very thick like that. And uh, you could also break the shadow apart like that, and you can move the shadow around. If I have contour selected on my object, I go up here and I just start adding to the contour. Right now it's adding an inside contour. Uh, I don't typically use those, but so let's go to outside contour, and then we have something on the outside. We can add multiple steps to this but I don't really like this because it it goes from your outside contour color to the inside contour color as you can see that gradient right here and uh, I don't really like that so I generally create each individual contour like this and then I break it apart and then I add to this contour because um, chances are you might not have the same size contour 
And you saw what I just did right there. I changed the color just by going to this fill right there. This first color right here is the outline color. And since I have a no outline, I don't need to utilize that. And uh, I'm just changing the color of this outside right there. And uh, then I can break it apart and I can drag color onto here like that. So there we go, those are contours. Okay, blend, I don't use blend often. Uh, distort, I don't really use distort. Now envelope, I do use a lot. So I generally use envelope with text. So let's do, um, I'm doing Astros because we use this a lot with baseball teams. Let's change this font to something like college. There we go. And uh, enveloping, it's very cool. Click envelope and I can click this middle node and drag it up like that or click this bottom one and drag it down like that. Um, but let's go back and let's click this. Then I select this middle single arc mode. So click that node and then click this single arc mode. It's gonna make your distortions a lot more prettier. And so we do that. We can move it around like that. And we can drag the bottom one just like that. And it kind of makes it arced like so. Um, you could just do the bottom if you wanted, just like that. And then you could click your pick tool and make it taller. So you could see it better. And then you could put your uh, baseball under that or whatever art you want, but that's enveloping for you. I don't really use extrude block shadow. It's kind of the same as a drop shadow, but it's just a solid object. So let's do text right here. And let's add a block shadow to this. Click block shadow. And I just click and drag, just like that. And it's gonna create a giant shadow like that. So let's just go very small. So let's go about right there. Boom, and there's a block shadow. It's kind of weird. Sometimes you'll just have to mess around with it. Um, because you'll end up doing that right off the start. <laughs> then we have transparencies. Transparencies are really cool. Um, I do use transparencies a lot. So let's grab a square on top of a black background. And uh, if I go to the transparency, I can click and drag like this. Or I can just click the uniform transparency. Um, or just the fountain transparency again, and I can mess around with this. Also to invert the colors, you can switch sides like that, or you can change this side to black and this side to white, just like that. The color eyedropper is very useful if you have uh, JPEGs and you need to match the exact color. So let's say we have a shape right here. It's a square and I wanna grab this orange right here. So I go to the color eyedropper, click the orange, and then I have the exact color from the JPEG right there. Interactive fill, I do use this a lot for applying different gradients to objects. So I have interactive fill selected and my object selected. And I go up here to the fountain fill and it gives me only two colors on this line. However, I can click and drag another color onto it if I want, and then I can change each one of these squares. So I can go back and make both sides orange and then the inside white. So it gives it a nice gradient right there in the middle. Um, I can also make the inside red and it goes from orange to red. I can make this side blue and this side green and change the angle of it if I want. Um, this is useful if you're doing something like with a metallic grading or something. So I can go like uh, gray on the sides and then a super light gray in the middle and now it gives it a metallic feel. I can go gold on the outside and light yellow on the middle. Um, if I wanna make the outside darker too, I can click this and then go to this little window right here, color viewer, and I can drag it down and make it darker if I want. Same thing with this one over here, just go over here. There we go. And there's that. That's the color gradient. And that's pretty much all the tools I use the most. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any 
questions or comments, just leave them down below and I can answer them. Thanks.